Good morning. Good morning. It's a wonderful day. It is July the 15th in the year 2018. 2018. God is good. His mercy is everlasting. And His truth endureth to all generations and forever. And I am so thankful to Him because He has blessed each of us to open our eyes this morning. He's given us our reasonable portions of health and strength. He's done so many wonderful things for us as he is doing right now and he's going to do in the future, which is right now because time is passing every second. And I am thankful to him for everything. It's Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. It's time for Sunday school. And our lesson this morning is entitled, let me get to that subject here. It's entitled Persistent Prayer Power. Persistent Prayer Power. It's Luke, the 18th chapter, the first through the eighth verses. Persistent Prayer Power. And as many of you know that have been watching me and listening to me throughout the years, uh, for the past two years, I would say I've been using the LG Parkhurst Juniors Sunday School Commentary, and that is found on the website OUOSU.com, OUOSU.com. Our telephone number here at Greater Gospel Temple, the Church of Praise and Worship, and the Inspiration of God Ministries is 214-403-7563. Seven five six three. It is because of God's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassions don't fail. His mercies are renewed every morning, and God is faithful. We're going right into our lesson, Persistent Prayer Power. I'm going to the scripture. Persistent Prayer Power. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? My goodness, my goodness, persistent prayer power, persistent prayer power. And we will go into our commentary part. Now, the Apostle Paul wrote, pray without ceasing in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, the 17th verse. Depending on your translation, we should either pray always, which can mean to be in a spiritual state, to pray before and whenever a situation calls for prayer and whenever a need arises as well as at daily regular times for prayer are always pray which can mean before making any decision taking any action and as often as the holy spirit prompts us to pray pray and do not give up or lose heart do you hear that? Pray and do not give up and lose heart. Pray until God tells you yes or no 
or wait. All right? Pray until God tells you yes or no or wait. All right? Now pray for God to give you grace to persist in prayer until you receive God's answer or until you see that you were praying for the wrong things or for the wrong timing and need to stop praying, okay? All right. Now, this judge was the opposite of God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ love and respect each other and both love care for and respect the people they have created in their image. Jesus evaluated the character of the judge and the judge serves as a bad example for anyone to follow. So you want to get that, okay? He evaluated him and of course he, the judge, serves as a bad example for anyone to follow in his character, all right? Now, the love of Christ for us encourages us to always pray. Jesus always prayed, even in the darkest hours on the mountaintop and before his greatest trials, Jesus serves as our good example. If a bad judge will help a persistent widow, how much more will our Heavenly Father and Jesus help us to answer our prayers? prayers. If this man that didn't respect God, didn't regard God, didn't regard man, he was not afraid of them, if he can come around and do good, what about our Heavenly Father who is good all the time? What about it? All right? Now, the widow had no husband to help her. Perhaps he had been murdered or and their land stolen by an adversary. This is just a speculation by the commentator. We don't know what her problem was because the Bible does not specify. The scriptures don't specify. But she needed help at this time, okay? So Queen Jezebel had neighbor murdered to steal his land. These examples, okay? But not fact about this widow, this particular widow, okay? But Queen Jezebel had neighbor murder to steal his land for King Ahab. And we can see that in 1 Kings 21, so we don't know what the latest problem was. But anyway, this is an example. Anything could have happened, but she had to go to the king for him to avenge her. All right? So the widow may have had children to care for and no means to keep them from starving. Whatever the issue, whatever the issue she had been treated unjustly by her adversary or opponent, and the judge was acting unjustly by repeatedly refusing to hear her case. Now, I have answers for what I'm going through right now. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus did not say how long she persisted or whether or not she called out to the judge morning, noon, and night, but she was relentless in her pursuit of justice. Remember the scriptures that men are always to pray and not to faint, okay? Now, she approached the judge as though her life and the life of her children depended on her receiving justice, and perhaps their lives did depend on a just verdict. The judge admitted to himself that he did not fear the judgment of God or God's punishment for failing to do his duty as God's law demanded. Now he made this clear. He confessed to this himself, okay? But he knew what was right. He knew what was right. There's the clincher. He knew what was right, but he had hardened his conscience and hard to avoid doing what was right. He did not care for an unjustly afflicted widow in desperate need. He just didn't care. Fear of God would not prevent him from taking a bribe to pervert justice. He did not care for his reputation among people, for he lived entirely for himself. He lived entirely 
or himself. He was totally absorbed. As Christians, we need to remember that when we are praying, we are praying to our Father in heaven who wants to help us, that Jesus is also praying for us, that the Holy Spirit is helping us pray rightly, and God has good reasons for delaying his answers when they seem to be delayed to us. Oh, that is so good. I must, I must read that again. As Christians, get this, get this, as Christians, we need to remember that when we are praying, we are praying to our Father in heaven who wants to help us and that Jesus is also praying for us, that the Holy Spirit is helping us pray rightly and God has good reasons for delaying his answers when they seem to be delayed. Good reasons. All right. And guess what? Because we love him and he is our heavenly father. Those good reasons are for our good. Totally for our good. My God. That's why it pays to live a holy and a sanctified life. That's why it pays to trust in God all the days of our lives. That's why it pays to love God with all of our heart, our mind, our body, our soul, our spirit, to love him. Because what he does is for our good. All things work together. That's the good, the bad, and the ugly. All things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to purpose. And then King James inserted his in there. But we know it's talking about God, all right? According to purpose. What is our purpose? What do we do? God has a purpose for each of our lives. Now, let me just continue this. Now, the unjust judge was self-centered and thought of no one but himself. Neither God nor any other human being mattered to him. Only his personal peace and prosperity concerned him in whatever might disturb him his comfort or diminish his will that's all he was concerned about he did not want something to happen to himself either being attacked with more than words or just being worn out from the widow's relentless pestering all right so how different from our knowing that the judge of all the earth will do right so furthermore our Heavenly Father loves us so much that He graciously sent His only Son to save us and give us justice, mercy, and eternal life through faith in Jesus. We get all of that. We get it all, okay? Now, Jesus intended His hearers to learn from the evil example of the unjust judge so we can avoid his example and so we are not surprised when we face uncaring unjust judges who are only judges for personal selfish reasons we do not want to become as the unjust judge and we want to be aware that some think exactly as he did. My goodness, we so, see so many examples of that today. So many examples of that today. So God's children, God's elect, or God's chosen ones have faith in God and they trust God to do the right, loving, just, merciful, and wise things always. That's our God. That's the true and the living God, okay? By grace through faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, people become chosen ones, okay? Jesus taught many other truths about prayer for believers to understand, to pray in his name, for example. But here Jesus wants to emphasize the importance of persistent prayer 
persistent prayer. Keep praying whatever, 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 or should I say no matter what the problem is, continue to pray and God will answer. And people say, he'll say yes, he might say no, or he might say wait a little while longer. Whatever it is, you'll hear him. He will tell you, but be persistent in prayer, but pray in the right way. And that's in the name of Jesus, because he is the mediator for us. So we pray to God, but we pray in the name of Jesus, because Jesus takes it to God for us. And then it also mentioned that the Holy Spirit guides us. Because when we are saved, when we have repented of our sins, when we have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we're saved. And the Holy Spirit lives in us, and so the Holy Spirit guides us into all truths. So it leads us in the direction that we're supposed to go, and it teaches us how to pray rightly. Okay? How to pray right. All right? Now... When Daniel prayed 21 days, there was a reason for the delay in getting his answer from God. The angel God sent to answer Daniel had to overcome an opposing angel. And we can see that in Daniel the 10th chapter and the 13th verse. And Daniel's persistent prayers made a difference. He didn't give up. He prayed for 21 days. The angel was on his way to help him. God had sent the angel and the angel had to fight his way through because the adversary, an opposing angel, an evil angel was trying to stop him from doing what God had sent him to do. My goodness. And Daniel's persistent prayers made a difference. There's an opposing angel that's holding up our blessings. But be persistent. Don't give up. Continue to pray in the name of Jesus. We must pray in the name of Jesus, okay? We have spiritual enemies and must that must be overcome. We have spiritual enemies that must be overcome. So we must keep on praying. Keep on praying. Don't give up. Keep on praying. Now, there may be many reasons for delays in our receiving answers to our prayers. So Jesus said, keep on praying. God knows. Keep on praying. Okay? God will answer our prayers. Yes, no, or not yet. Sometimes we need to change our attitude or our minds about someone or something that is a concern in our prayers. God has concern for all the consequences of every prayer we pray. Do you hear that? God has concern for all the consequences of every prayer we pray. And God in his timing must consider all the consequences of our prayers and work everything out for the best of all concern. Isn't this wonderful. This is so good. My goodness. We can trust God to do what is best, right, just, merciful, and loving at all times. For he has shown that faithfulness through our Lord Jesus Christ. He has shown that faithfulness through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, how much faith did Jesus find when he first came to earth? How much faith will Jesus find when he comes again? Will he find us and others persistent in prayer and trusting him every day? Will Jesus find us praying when we meet him face to face? Will he find us praying when we meet him face to face? My goodness, God is so good. And I thank him for everything that he's doing, everything he's done, everything he's going to do. And you know I repeat myself on that because I'm thankful for him. I'm so, 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 so thankful. I love you. This is Greater Gospel Temple and Inspiration of God Ministries. This is our Sunday school lesson for July the 15th in the year 2018. And our subject is persistent 
prayer power. Persistent prayer power. May the mercies and blessings of God continually, continually overshadow you. 214-403-7563 GGT Church 66 at yahoo.com